Welcome back today, to guys. Today we're going to be going over Chapter 21 notes. Okay, we're going to be looking at a couple different things here to wrap up Chapter 21, uh, mainly the Emancipation Proclamation, the Gettysburg Address. We're going to look at African American involvement in the Civil War, and then the daily life of soldiers. Okay, so to get started, our standards, we're looking at 8.64. We're going to analyze the significance of the Emancipation Proclamation and the Gettysburg Address. 8.65, we're going to describe African-American involvement in the Union Army, including the Massachusetts 54th Regiment at Fort Wagner and the 13th U.S. Colored Troops in the Battle of Nashville. Last standard, 8.66, we're going to analyze how the writings of Sam Watkins and Elijah Hunt Rhodes illustrated the daily life of the common soldier. Okay, so our essential questions. How is the Emancipation Proclamation significant? How is the Gettysburg Address significant? How were African Americans involved in the U.S. Army, uh, including the Massachusetts 54th Regiment at Fort Wagner and the 13th U.S. Colored Troops in the Battle of Nashville? Uh, last essential, I'm sorry, next essential question, how did the writings of Sam Watkins illustrate the daily life of the common soldier? And last, how did the writings of Elijah Hunt Rhodes illustrate the daily life of the common soldier? All right, so let's go ahead and get into it with the Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, so on September 22nd, 1862, President Lincoln issued the preliminary Emancipation Proclamation. It declared all slaves in rebelling Confederate states would be free if the rebels did not rejoin the Union by January 1st of 1863. Now, of course, the Confederate states refused to obey so the focus of the Civil War shifted from preserving the Union or keeping the United States together to freeing the slaves, okay? So perfect timing. Uh, Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation five days after the Battle of Antietam. Uh, he had planned to issue it earlier, but the Union had lost many battles to the Confederacy and he didn't want it to seem like an act of desperation. All right, so he knew that the timing was right after Antietam uh, in order to strengthen the resolve of the Union and change the course of the war, okay? So the effects that it has. Abolitionists hailed the emancipation of slaves as a glorious victory. Southerners, on the other hand, saw it as final proof that the, way, that the Union was trying to destroy the Southern way of life by getting rid of slavery. Uh, slaves in the South saw the Union troops as liberators, so people coming to free them. Um, and now Northerners had just cause and a reason to fight. Okay, they're no longer preserving the Union. They are going to fight for the freedom of slaves. All right. Now, the proclamation didn't free slaves in Confederate states immediately, though. Okay, remember, the Confederate states really aren't listening to the United States, so they're not worried about the Emancipation Proclamation. But the proclamation paved the way for full abolition of slavery across the U.S. Um, the last effect that the Emancipation Proclamation has is that it allowed freed Blacks to enlist in the Union Army. So before the Emancipation Proclamation, freed Blacks were not allowed to fight in the Union Army. All right, so we see African-American soldiers join the fight now. All right, so during the first years of the war, African Americans weren't allowed to fight in the Union Army. Lincoln was worried that allowing former slaves into the army would push the border states to secede. Missouri, Kentucky, uh, Maryland, Delaware. He was worried that those states would secede with the South if uh, former slaves were allowed to fight. Frederick Douglass, though, argued that black men deserved a chance to fight for the cause of freedom. So with the Emancipation Proclamation, it allowed African Americans to join the US Army and fight. Now we see two uh, very famous African American regiments. The first one is the 54th Massachusetts Regiment. Okay, they fought at the Battle of Fort Wagner. All right, now the 54th Massachusetts Inf Infantry Regiment was a regiment made up of mostly of black men. On July 18th of 1863, the soldiers stormed Fort Wagner near the port of Charleston, uh, led by Colonel Robert Gold Shaw. Okay, they scaled the walls of the fort and fought hand to hand with Confederate troops. Now, these Union soldiers were outnumbered and suffered a large number of casualties at Fort Wagner. 
and they ended up losing the battle. But the 54th Regiment proved to the Union that black soldiers could fight with bravery and honor. The other one, the other group, the 13th U.S. Colored Troops at the Battle of Nashville. Uh, the 13th U.S. Colored Troops was organized in Nashville, Tennessee, and made up mostly of former slaves. Uh, the 13th fought at the Battle of Nashville on December 15th and 16th of 1864. Um, and Union forces almost destroyed the Confederate Army of Tennessee, which meant that Tennessee would remain in Union hands for the rest of the war after the Battle of Nashville. So the 13th boldly, boldly charged the Confederate lines, and nearly 40% of their men were killed, but their effort and bravery helped the Union win the Battle of Nashville. The heroism of the 13th earned Black soldiers the respect of white troops who witnessed their bravery and skill. Okay, so we do see African-American involvement here in the Civil War. All right, next, the Gettysburg Address. So on November 19th of 1863, President Lincoln visited Gettysburg, where the Battle of Gettysburg took place. Now, officials were gathered there to dedicate a cemetery for fallen soldiers from the battle. And Lincoln was invited to deliver a speech at this ceremony. Now, he was not the main speaker, okay, but his address lives on. So Lincoln's spe speech was short, 272 words, and it was spoken in under two minutes. Uh, he spoke about the principles of the Declaration of Independence, claiming that America was dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. He sought to preserve the ideals that the nation was founded on. He saw an opportunity for a new birth of freedom here, okay, during the Civil War. And he called on Americans to reaffirm their commitment to the Union so that a government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from this earth. And that is taken from his speech there at Gettysburg. Okay. Um, Lincoln had no idea how important his speech would become at the time. All right. He even said so in his speech. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it will never forget what they did here, referring to the battle. Okay. Uh, Lincoln's speech was reprinted in newspapers across the country the next day. And the Gettysburg Address continues to be uh, recognized as one of the greatest speeches in U.S. history. Okay, so it has a lasting impact kind of bringing the country back together uh, after the Battle of Gettysburg. All right. So looking into the daily life of the common soldiers here with Sam Watkins and Company H. All right, now Sam Watkins joined the Confederate side when Tennessee seceded from the Union. He was born in Murray County, Tennessee, and came from a wealthy slaveholding family. He served as a private in the 1st Tennessee Regiment throughout the war, and he participated in many battles, including the Battle of Shiloh. Um, years after the war, he wrote a memoir of his experiences, Company H, the 1st Tennessee Regiment, or a sideshow to the big show. Um, now, Watkins' writings are sometimes somber and sometimes humorous, okay, but they give us this rare look at the daily life of Confederate soldiers, okay, he's going along, kind of gives us this look of what soldiers during the Civil War were going through, all right. Uh, the other author, uh, All for the Union, The Diary of Elijah Hunt Rhodes, all right, now Elijah Hunt Rhodes was a soldier in the 2nd Rhode Island Volunteer, Volunteer Infantry in the Union Army. Uh, he was born in Rhode Island and enlisted as a private, but rose quickly up the ranks to become commander of his unit. Uh, he fought in the First Battle of Bull Run, the Battle of Antietam, the Battle of Gettysburg, and he was at Appomattox uh, when Lee surrendered to Grant. Uh, now, he kept a diary throughout the war, which his great-grandson later published as All for the Union, the Civil War Diary and Letters of Elijah Hunt Rhodes. Uh, his diary describes the daily struggles of soldiers in the Union Army. So Elijah Hunt Rhodes is with the Union. Sam Watkins is with the Confederacy. Um, now, Rhodes' diary reflects his changing attitudes of the Civil War. In the beginning, he thought it was going to be this great grand adventure that he was going to get to go on. Uh, but by the end, he had grown tired of the destruction and suffering, okay? So uh, that is all that I have for today, all right? If you have any questions, let me know. If not, then we will see y'all next time.